themselves. Let's talk about the road ahead for investing. David Nelson is chief strategist at Bell Point Asset Management and one of our great regular guests. David, it is great to see you. Uh, welcome to August Trading, by the way. Give us your preview <laughs> of how this month might compare to the month of July, in your opinion. Uh, maybe we'll get something of a reversal from what we saw last month. Think, think about what we've had to deal with in the last month. You know, we, we had a presidential debate. We had an assassination attempt on a former president. A sitting president drops out of the race, hands it to his VP. And in the middle of all this, there's been this chaos of, of, of you know, rotating from one asset class to another. And for, for me, it, it, it's kind of looked like, you know, the deck of the Titanic with people scrambling from one boat to the other. I look at that small cap trade and I have trouble on the sustainability of it. And I think what we're going to learn here is all those companies that we sold in July, we're going to probably buy them back uh, because that's where the growth is. Uh, it's not going to be in the small cap area, too dependent on the Fed. I mean, I know you don't technically cover what's happening with the TSX, but you're keenly aware of the makeup of the market where energy and materials and financials tend to rule the index compared to the S&P, which is dominated by tech. So uh, does that statement suggest you think that, you know, any markets that are less skewed to big technology might underperform going forward after the run up that they've seen? Well, it's a relative game. You know, it doesn't mean that they, these are not things that you're going to own. And there are certainly small caps out there that you want to own. But I, I look at small caps very dependent on the Fed cutting rates. And if the Fed does cut rates uh, come September, which the market is suggesting right now, more than likely a recession will follow. In the last half century, every time the Fed is embarked on a cutting cycle, a recession followed, in large part because they're usually late. The only time that didn't happen was 1984. Now, when it comes to um, the sort of the macro story, uh, you've got a lot of people painting kind of a five or a 10 year view on what's going to happen, especially with some of the trends on things like interest rates and beyond macro considerations, geopolitical stuff. We just had the CEO of a gold miner who is quite bullish on the price of bullion over the long term. Uh, everybody's got an opinion on where you know energy fits into the equation over the long term. Um, how do you feel about the uh, the performance of some of those kind of sectors versus big tech, let's say, over the next few years? Well, I'm long gold uh, for some of the reasons that you suggest. I mean, I think gold is going to be an important asset class, uh, especially when you consider where debts and deficits are uh, right now. Oil will always be important. Uh, any rational view of a greener society has to include fossil fuels, at least until alternative energy platforms can scale. They're not ready to do that. The only other answer for that is going to be is going to be nuclear power. And there seems to be some some resistance for that. If we're going to build out this AI infrastructure, we're going to need, need a massive amount of energy. So these companies should should do well. However, if it, it kind of it's a political dynamic as well, because, uh, you know, we have two people running for president. If Trump becomes president, I would suspect that the price of oil will go down, but we'll probably be pumping a lot more of it. I, I'm glad you brought up the amount of money that has to be spent on the infrastructure surrounding AI. Um, earnings season has been very interesting because uh, Basically, a week ago, Alphabet, the parent company of Google, came out with its quarterly results. It felt like the market was a little uneasy with the amount of spending tied to the AI future that that company was embarking on. Meta comes out yesterday. They are spending a lot in that area as well. Um, and even it's a bit of a stretch to say that all of that spending is immediately making its way into the ad story at Meta. But I think people find it easier to buy into the story that an ad business that doesn't have to change per se and can leverage AI is going to benefit Meta very quickly. Um, what was your view on what that company had to say and how that maybe factors into this uh, re-rotation that you might be watching in the next month? I think you great bring, bring up a great point. Meta is probably one of the few companies that can capitalize on this right now. And that's been really the problem over the last month. There's this mismatch in timing of, of the AI trade. You know, we're spending all this money on the infrastructure build, build out, yet we're not getting, you know, we're not getting the payback on the adoption side. And I suspect it's that way with a lot of technology platforms, especially one as disruptive as this one. So, yeah, Meta's, Meta's an early beneficiary of this. But I think what markets are starting to understand is that this infrastructure spend is, is quite real and it's not stopping. That's why you saw yesterday the run in, in NVIDIA. These companies are spending big time and they think it's going to be profitable down the road. As long as they continue to believe that, this trade works. All right. David, always appreciate at the time. Thanks for stopping by. Covered a lot of ground. As always, David Nelson joining us from Bell Point Asset Management.